Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Unnamed Sports Show. Uh, first off, sorry, we're a little bit behind schedule today. It definitely wasn't my fault, uh, but uh, we're getting started now. Crisp 705. I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jerry and Jason. How are we doing, fellas? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Doing good. Sorry, I forgot to change the uh, the NFL countdown in the in the background. So we're actually 22. 22, 22 Sundays until NFL football. All yep. right. That's like so many Sundays. I know. So sad. <laughs> one by one, we're getting there, though. Well, before we get started, uh, thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on, uh, you can find us on X, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, and uh, make sure to like and leave us a review wherever you do listen to your podcast. So uh, we're going to jump right in. It's still March Madness in April, and uh, our tournament bracket standings are as follows jerry's in first he wants to flex i guess uh espn <laughs> fan five two six four three two two six four six great work you're in second place uh only a couple points behind jerry there in first then uh pauline my girlfriend she's in third place uh and uh kaylee there in fourth Funny, Pauline was pointing out to me the other day, uh, Jason, you were talking smack last week about how it wasn't uh, the year to just pick your favorite team names, but apparently it is the year to pick your favorite team names because they're both kicking both of our butts. Ray uh, Charles, maybe you, I'm blind to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sean there in fifth place. Uh, Matt Carpenter there in sixth. Me and Jason tied for seventh, although I have a higher point, much, much higher point total possibility. Uh, and then, <laughs> poor Houston. And then uh, the Fantastic, Famtastic, yep. and Jimbo's Bracket. Ooh, Jimbo. Jimmy. 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 44 what, point what happened, brother? What that, happened? That's terrible. That's terrible. I but, bet his uh, uh, max points are about the same as mine, though, so. No, you're nope. No, no, his max points are much higher than yours, Jason. You oh. don't have anybody left in the tournament, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, you're maxed out at 610. That's tough. That's, that's a tough day. He believing that everyone else is gonna fail. <laughs> Yikes, and my NC State could win it all and screw Yikes. us all over. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any possible way that I win. I don't think there is. No, because I think if Purdue I wins. Can... Yeah, then Pauline will win. Yeah. I mean, I'm in the same boat with UConn. I have to have right. UConn to win. Right. Or, or I guess Purdue to not win. That would work too. Yeah. Yeah, but... Thanks to everyone that uh, decided to participate and make a bracket. We really appreciate it. This has been really fun following along. But we're down to our final four teams. The last four. They are, Do we have a graphic for the final four? Or, okay. Yeah, just the bracket. The bracket. Yeah, you can't really <laughs> read any of it. But uh, maybe people watching on their TVs can see. But uh, I sure can't. But I do know that the final four teams, starting from top left, you have UConn. Bottom left, Alabama, they'll be playing the second game on Saturday. And then uh, on the upper right in the south portion coming out of there is NC State. And uh, coming out of the Midwest is Purdue. They are the first game on Saturday. I don't know the exact time. It's like 6 and 9, six and I think. 6 and 9, I think, like yeah. So, uh, but those are going to be super, super exciting uh, games. Jason... You know, we've we've kind of done our predictions so far. Obviously, you're capped out. You got zero of the final four correct. That's okay. It happens to the best of us. Uh, so you're the perfect one to kind of, you know, start fresh. All right. So what, what do you see happening? Here? Fifth chance bracket. <laughs> fifth fifth chance final four. Who wins? Who wins it all? Who you got? Uh, just. Rub it in my face harder, all right? I got Purdue. Who's stopping Zach Eady? No one, all right? Like, the man's too big. You're throwing bodies at him. He'll follow out three people. 
I mean, what was it? Like 13 last game? 13 yeah. fouls called against him? Mm-hmm. Wrong. Not against him, but 13, yeah, like. Sorry, on him, yeah. On him, yeah. yeah. That's, get, that's literally, know. that's, yeah, that's literally almost three people just out of the game because of that man. So, like, how, who's going to stop him? I mean, UConn is playing good, but, like, I, I don't know how you're going to stop Zach Eady. He just sits in the paint, bodies him. Maybe, maybe our boy from NC State, future offensive tackle, <laughs> can <laughs> throw a little body on him, but. He's six nine. That dude's seven foot three, seven foot four. Like, you're not stopping that. So I'm going with Purdue. Who wins between UConn and Alabama? I think Alabama plays a dangerous game. Um, I mean they're literally run, run three, run, run three. So it's like if they can play well or shoot well, they can, they can be any team. The issue is is when you're not hitting those shots, and I think UConn's a good enough team to defend that. So I'm going to go UConn. UConn, uh, I'm basic here, 1-1, UConn versus Purdue. Uh, I think Alabama's played very well. I just I don't know how long that can continue. Um, mm-hmm. Playing that style of basketball, it's, it's hard to always be able to make your shots, and when you're not making your shots, you have to have a different plan in place, and I don't, I don't think Alabama has anything else other than a run, run, shoot. So, um, I'm going to go UConn, and then obviously Purdue, because Zach Eady, Purdue beats UConn. I like it. Jace, or Jerry, rather, I'm sure you have the same Final Four, or at least I'm sure you have UConn beating Alabama, but uh, as far as uh, NC State Purdue, do you see an upset happening there, or do you think uh, Purdue still pulls it out? UConn Purdue National Championship. Yeah, I mean, just to echo what Jason said, nobody's stopping Zach Eady. Uh DJ Burns has a knack for getting into foul trouble, and Zach Eady is the best in the NCAA at drawing fouls. So, I, I, DJ Burns is going to get two quick ones like early in the first half. Going to have to sit, and unfortunately, NC State just doesn't have the firepower that Purdue has either. And while they're on this, you know, team of destiny magical run, I think unfortunately it does come to an end. Um, as far as the, the championship game goes, you are correct. I do do take UConn over Alabama. As far as the championship game goes, I'm kind of in a win-win situation if it's UConn versus Purdue because I have UConn in my bracket, but I have also have a future on Purdue to win. So as long as, as long as Iowa wins the women's national championship, so I parlayed them together. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I do think – uh, I do hope we get UConn versus Purdue. I think it'll uh, bode for a better matchup, uh, a better game. Um, and I think it'd be much more fun to watch because UConn is just on an absolute tear right now. Uh, they went on a 30-0 run in, the, in their Elite Eight game against Illinois. They, it was 23-23 with uh, a couple minutes to go in the first half. And then uh, they scored five, took it into halftime, 28-23, and then 25-0 out of the gates. <laughs> Out of halftime, just insane. You look up like ten minutes later, and it's fifty-three to twenty-three, just ridiculous. Uh, but I, 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 I agree with what Jason's saying. UConn do, kind of doesn't have a, a guy to stop uh, Purdue either. They probably have the uh, the closest thing to stop uh, Zach Eady and um, what's their what's their big man's name? King Kingler King something forget what his name is um but he he's really grown into his own uh here throughout the tournament and has played a good brand of basketball so i think it'll be an interesting final four i think it's going to be a good one i i can't wait to see it alabama is one of those teams that uconn plays like like illinois is a very consistent team especially defensively and can get to the rack and for them to go on a 25-0 30-0 really but 25-0 in the second half specifically run to just totally blow out that game you know a team like alabama is apt to fall to a 30 to 0 run yeah a team that literally just goes pass pass chuck pass pass chuck like if they're cold for a minute uconn will run up 15 20 30 points like instantly but on the flip side alabama is a team that can shoot themselves back into a game if they get hot so yeah. uh I don't know. What was it that what get who were they playing when we were watching him? We were like, this is the worst college basketball I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, like Grand some, Canyon. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Grand Canyon and then we're literally just hucking up, you know, 30 footers, bricking them and turning the ball over. It was it was so <laughs> embarrassing. But Alabama still won. And then Alabama found a way out of the West there. So I mean, they're a good squad and they can score. They're the number one scoring offense in all of college basketball. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's something it, 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 that'll be a good one to watch. I think, I think Purdue honestly just outmatches NC State across the board. I, NC State's got a, a great story and uh, DJ Burns is fun to watch. I don't even think they guard ED with DJ Burns simply because mm-hmm. he's six nine and gets into foul trouble. I think they guard him with that tall white dude that they have that. I think it's like Middle Burke or Middle something. What's his name? I can't remember. I don't remember. I We're not see. as good with the college names, guys. All right. There's too, never many even heard of these guys. There's too many players. There's too many players. Never heard of these guys. <laughs> Speaking of uh, college, though, tonight, NIT championship. This is, we don't have a graphic for this, but Indiana State, the Sycamores are playing against Seton Hall. One seed versus one seed for the NIT Cream tournament. the dream, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I heard him called Green Milk Lumpkin. Chamberlain the other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, it's just honestly the best. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, something to tune into. I want I want to watch. Obviously, rooting for Indiana State, and um, that was a complete robbery that they weren't included in the tournament this year. Even yeah. I don't think they would have been a Final Four team, but they would have been freaking really fun to watch. Yeah, like, absolutely. Watching a white dude stroke it, six, seven foot white dude, six ten white dude stroke the goggles, it bro, all just day. Yeah, dishing dimes <laughs> all over the place, man. Yeah, he's awesome. So, pretty fantastic. Yeah. And something to to pay attention to: they only have two people graduating. So, Indiana State's returning almost their entire roster next year. Plus, apparently, the Pat McAfee show, if they win the NIT championship, is going to cut them a massive NIL deal. So, hmm. not technically, you know, that's quid quo, quid pro quo. But they said uh, we'll have a meeting if you guys win the NIT tournament. So nice. It wow. still won't be enough to compete with the big leagues. <laughs> no, but it'll be. They'll be like the next year Cinderella story. I bet they Under- go. I wonder what the the futures are on saying- Indiana State next year to make the Final Four. <laughs> <laughs> Those players are gone, is what I'm saying. Like, I don't care how much Pat's offered, unless it's like ten million. Oh, you're range. saying their player? You're saying their players? Their are players gone? are gone. Oh yeah. I don't think so. If you watch the way that they play, they're not like super explosive or anything like that. I know. The the, the white guy, Cream Abdul Jabbar, is the. I no one knows his real name. Yeah, what is his actual all these, <laughs> all these fake names? But he's the only one I could him. They got another. They got a guard who's pretty good, but everyone else is like they're a good player, but they're not. I don't think they're not like like Kentucky's not going to come calling for him. You know, Duke's not going to yeah. come snatch these guys up. Robbie Avila, yes, the man, the myth, the legend himself. What a rock star. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, that's a fun one to watch. Anyway, back to the Final Four. Uh, yeah, I think Purdue wins. I think UConn versus Purdue. And I think Zach Eady is unstoppable. You know, Zach Eady, one of two players named to unanimous uh, All American this year. Does anyone know who the second one is? Hmm. I do not. If I had to guess it's probably the dude from uh, who they just play. Tennessee, Clip. yes. Tennessee. Yes, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Yep, Dalton, Dalton Connect. Connect. Nice. Yes. Yes. Dude, that dude went from being a like nobody, like transferred in to be a role player to now a lottery pick mm-hmm. in the yep. NFL draft and the eighth highest scoring player in college basketball NBA right now draft. with the what I say? You said NFL draft. <laughs> oh, he's going to be a lottery pick in the NFL draft. Baby. Hey, what position is he playing? Tight end? Wide receiver? Wide receiver. Wide receiver. No, he, uh, an NBA draft, and he's someone like six foot 10, six foot nine, shoots 40% from three, can shoot from anywhere, good rebounder. Yeah. So, and he's a cool story, too. To... He had a hell of a game. <laughs> he was, yeah, he had 30 some points. Yeah. On on sixty percent three point shooting, crazy. It was the rest and of lost. his team that couldn't hit anything, man? They just yeah. 
Yeah, yeah their point guard like think went like one for eight. Like it was pretty rough. Yeah. So any final thoughts on uh the national championship or the final four in the national championship for college basketball by by our next podcast, which again moved to Thursdays, Thursdays at seven, sometimes seven oh five. Uh <laughs> Um. Any final thoughts on college basketball? Well, nope. men's college. Men's basketball. Yeah. Men's college basketball. basketball. Donovan Klingon was the uh, the center that I was thinking of for UConn. He's oh. he's the guy who's who's been playing really well. Who could match up to Zach Eady, but probably still no shot. I mean, I don't th- I don't even think he's seven foot. So we'll see what happens. He's not. Yeah, if he's not seven foot. Yeah. Forget about it. Unless he's like. Six eleven two fifty, and can jump 60. out the gym. I can jump with yeah. a forty-five inch vertical. Oh, <laughs> like, just kidding. Just... He's he's seven two. Oh, okay. Seven okay. seven two two eighty. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. We're gonna have a big man matchup in the oh. national championship. Seven two oh, two eighty versus seven four three hundred. If so you... by the way, both these teams have to beat. Alabama and NC State, which aren't here for no reason. So right, yeah. I just uh, thirty over be- run in in the Elite Eight. Come on, <laughs> I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it really is. Thirty O is absurd against a very very good Illinois team. Yeah, that honestly should have been a one or a two seed, but dropped because uh, Terrence Shannon was suspended for part of the year. So that's when yeah. they lost their games. Like they're they're like a true top ten team in college basketball, and they got you can't put a thirty zero run on them. It's <laughs> it's insane. Thirty points to zero points. I I saw if you okay so if you include like the last couple minutes of the first half and to halftime and then up until they scored again, it was like fifty five minutes of real time that they didn't score in that game. It's almost an hour. Yeah, it's crazy. That's, that's terrible. Absurd. An hour of not having a basketball game. Bricks. Is Just bricks. Abs- <laughs> that's absurd. That's a tough day. That's a tough day. Yeah. Shifting gears a little bit. Still college basketball, so only a little shift of the gear. But we're going to talk a little bit about women's NCAA women's basketball, specifically about Caitlin Clark. Iowa takes down LSU. They now are in the final four. They face, oh, I know this. UConn. I just looked at it the other day. They face UConn, that's right, and then NC State AG and uh, South Carolina play uh, as the other final four game. Um, mm-hmm. So did you guys watch the LSU? I caught, yes. uh, I caught the last like quarter and a half. I had some other stuff going on, but I did watch the last quarter and a half. I watched all of it, and let me tell you what. Or uh, real quick, before you talk about the game, real quick before you talk about the game, that had more viewers than last year's NBA Finals. Yeah, thirteen that million. Call, that yeah, thirteen million. That's like a that's like an Ohio State football game. Yeah, that's like yep. Ohio State Penn State this year was Iowa, uh, Iowa LSU. LSU women's college basketball, which is absurd, absurd. Both Caitlin Clark and. Uh, What's Andrew her name? Reese. Angel Reese. Thank you. Thank you. Being able to pull in that many viewers. I mean, go ahead, Jerry. What are you gonna... Well, sorry, Jason wanted to talk yeah. about the game. Go yeah, ahead. Go ahead first, Jason. What do you, what do you go think ahead, of the game? I, I am... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's start in the first quarter. First quarter, LSU came out swinging. They were actually able to play a little bit of they were playing good defense. I mean, they were double teaming when they needed to. But as soon as the third quarter hit, right after halftime, ball, <laughs> step up past half court, cash money. It, it was over. It was over after then. It was it was completely over then. Also, Andrew Reese getting her leg injured. I think it oh, kind of messed injured. up. Defense. Yeah, I, I didn't know that she got injured. Sorry, her. I think it was her ankle. Though, right? I thought it it was it was pretty early in the third quarter. I'm pretty sure she still um, she still played though, right? Yeah, she, she played still played. It. She yeah. walked out um, for like a minute and then came back in. Um, okay. she, she 
you look at one. I mean, you look at one of these games, and you're like, it, would it be better if she stayed out of the game because the, some of the rotations that they were doing, right? She can't move. She's sitting right at the middle of the basket. If a screen is being set at the top of the three point line, like someone has to come up and help. So everybody wants to blame the point guard for LSU, but. I, like, what is she going to do? She's getting blocked. She has to run all the way around, try to watch the step back. Like, there's a lot you have to focus. And, like, you look at the second quarter, not that many points were scored. Why? Because there was better defense on her. I mean, yes, she's the GOAT. She, she probably would have gotten out of the bad shots, but they were getting turnovers early in the first half. They were getting stops. They were, it was a lot of a lot of good play on the defensive side for LSU in the first half before she had got hurt. Um, that being said, even if she didn't have to get hurt, you're going to get tired running around trying to keep up with her. So they're going to score more points eventually. But you, you, you just saw Iowa dominate from that point on, in my opinion. Um, and I think a lot of that had to do with just the movement on defense. But that being said, she's a girl for a reason. And boy, was she shooting lights out. Flash. Splash! Just shot after shot. It was amazing to watch. She put she forty-one put, points. Yeah, she put Haley Van Lith in the transfer portal, dog. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> she really? Like, yeah, she just yeah, entered the transfer portal today. <laughs> oh, that's tough. and that's a good point you bring up, though, because you know, for those that don't watch a lot of basketball or understand basketball, so a ball screen is, you know, the the. Uh, normally a big person, but it could be could be any of the guards will go up and set a screen, meaning they'll stop moving and use it like a wall on that defender for the offensive player to get around. And if your big man can't move, especially with somebody like Caitlin Clark, with they would just whoever is matched Ranger Reese is matched up on is going to set that ball screen. And now there's no hedge, there's no help off the ball screen where they're setting the wall. So Caitlin Clark is basically just getting an. Uh, her her defender two steps behind her and that's money every every single time yep. she is not going to miss like she is yep. as Jason articulately put lights out she is lights like out. literally <laughs> lights out so uh, and I had the pleasure of watching like seeing Ohio State Iowa earlier this year with my with my mom and that was incredible and she was incredible that game Ohio State won in overtime but she had forty. 44, 43, that game, like, she's yes. just, she's truly incredible at yeah. basketball. Yeah, and she's, so. she's leading, leading a movement right now. I think, I think women's final four prices, the ticket prices are like double what the men's are right now. It, mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely Crazy. insane. Did uh, you see, there was a, uh, that three on three league. Did you guys see this? Three. Big three. Is it, is yeah. it big three? Yeah. Big three offered her like 13 mil. Isn't that ice, like ice that. cubes? So ice cubes. Yeah. Ice cubes. Ice cu yeah. Uh, yeah. He has a team specifically. He offered her five yeah. mil to be on his team. And then I forget which rapper. I think it was Lil Duval. Okay. Okay. Maybe said, I'll double that. Okay. <laughs> it said, I'll offer 10 million. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and that's great. It sucks, I guess, for the WNBA because she's someone that would draw ticket sales for that. But for her, like, get your money. Right. Yeah. Like, this, this was another, I forget which reporter it was. It was I think it was just a, actually a podcast a old basketball player. But he was just saying, like, yeah, you think it might suck for the, NBA, uh, the WNBA, but, like, think about it like this. You go, she goes there for the big three, plays a year, gets that money. Then... The, she she has that crowd, and then you're going to watch her in the big three. You're probably going to watch her if she decides to go to the WNBA afterwards. Bring I don't, bring I over don't fans. Think she would. Why would you decide to then cut your paycheck? Yeah. one to one tenth. Not even. She a for, first of all, she doesn't need a paycheck from any division. The amount of advertisement money that she gets. That doesn't matter. What matters to her probably the most is winning and because being considered the best to ever do it at her support, right? And what's the best way to do that? Probably play with the people that you're competing against. Now, no, no disrespect to the big three, but like you're the best big three player of all time. 
I guess, you know, I mean, uh, yes. Yeah, she'll right. think that's great when she's sitting on a beach house in Malibu. <laughs> right. You can well, already do that, that is what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Maybe, probably. You know, I, she's on she's State Farm and Subway. I knew that. Um, so I'm sure those are massive advertisement sponsor deals, which is great. But you're telling me, like, you get the opportunity to go make 10 mil a year to go play in a in, in this league? Like, that's more than some NBA guys are making. Right, but and, is, it, is it a year or is it that a one-time thing? Like, do we know? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and that I was, think that, that was, was just a one-time deal that, to be like, that, hey. Come play that with would, us. God. No, I was going to say that would make – no, you're fine. That would make a difference. I just think that uh, – I mean, I would love – it would be great if she was able to draw viewership to the WNBA too. Like right now, the WNBA is not profitable. They actually lose money every year and are subsidized by the NBA. So if someone like Caitlin Clark could literally turn that around and make that a profitable business, at the same time though, like – you will never make as much money in the WNBA as of right now as you would make immediately in that big three. So I just, I, I wouldn't blame her either way is all I'm saying. No, I agree. I just, in my opinion, I feel like that's not her mindset to is the money, right? I, mm-hmm. To me, if, if assuming how she plays, how she, works it would be to compete against the best people in her field and i don't think the big three is that for her maybe it is i don't know but well i'm not even thinking necessarily the big three specifically but like the next you know the next semi-pro team or the next you know other league that offers her x amount of money or like a sponsorship deal to to join like barstool or something like that and just be a podcaster you know she is she gonna turn down the money and go play basketball at the WNBA, or is she, you know, is she gonna take the money and just kind of ride her life out and do what's best for her? I I don't think we know the answer to that yet. I think she'll play no matter what. I think being a podcaster that she would she could still make and still. Po- I mean, Patrick Beverly does podcasts all the time. Like she right. could still play and do podcasts and make a ton from that too. So. I think it's just for personally, I think it's more of a matter of if leagues like the big three are going to offer her money in the double digit millions, can the WNBA be enticing enough to pull someone that good there? That's all I'm saying. And honestly, so. who's to say the NBA doesn't give her a tryout to go somewhere like I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I don't think it'd be the craziest thing in the world to see. The Pistons could use her. <laughs> the Wizards could use her. That's all I'm saying. Well, if it's, sub- if it's a business that is subsidized by the NBA, you don't think they would spend money, some of their own money, to try to get her to play? Potentially. The WNBA. True. It's true. Like, Potentially, but the idea is that the, you would want – the WNBA to then be self-sufficient. So you, there's a cutoff point where paying her so much money, you're still going to end up not making money uh, on the product. So it still has right. to be like worth right. the money has to be worth the, but yeah, I think, I think for sure the NBA would do an upfront investment on somebody as, as uh, who has as much draw as Caitlin Clark. I agree. I mean, like, the NFL was ready to do it for Kyler Murray. Like, I don't know why the NBA wouldn't do it for mm-hmm. her. Fair enough. Yep. Hey, we spent a lot of time talking about women's basketball. Yeah. Look at us. Hey, go us. Go us. Go us. I will say, if, if Iowa does beat UConn, uh, they will likely be playing South Carolina, who has not lost a game all year, and only lost one game last year to, guess who? Iowa in the final four. So their opponent will be ready for revenge and also an extremely, 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 really like excellent team. So, yeah. Uh, I also, I think it's kind of crazy. We have two schools in UConn and NC state with both men's and women's team in the final four. I think that's pretty cool. Never happened. Yeah. Uh, really? To have two teams. To have two teams. 
to have two teams with both men and women in the final four. Now the only school to ever have both teams in the final four and both teams win a championship is That's UConn, right? Yep. UConn. Mm-hmm. UConn's done it twice. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I feel like UConn's done it a couple of times, but that makes sense. Two teams. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by the way, nobody thought NC State, like, I know we were a touch back to men's basketball real quick. NC State, uh, they were in a, they were three seconds away from not being anything, maybe not even being invited to the NIT tournament. They had a, like, losing record. They were down and, by three to Virginia. Yep. I, think, I think it was Virginia and hit yep. a prayer they, three. <laughs> a bank. A yeah. bank prayer three to send it to <laughs> overtime, and then they won in overtime and have not lost since. Yeah. Crazy. So, pretty absurd. Any final thoughts on uh, LSU, Iowa, uh, women's basketball in no. general? I wish uh, I wish I had bought tickets before the season started because it's in Cleveland. The women's Final Four is yeah. in Cleveland. Oh, this is year. it really? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's at uh, at Calf Stadium, but not for not for the price they're at right now. No way. <laughs> but, yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. They're double the price of the men's Final Four. Yeah. I think it's I think it's still crazy that Iowa is plus three hundred odds to win the championship. By the way, I think South that Carolina is ridiculous. Is yeah, South Carolina is that good. Like, they are. They don't have Caitlin Clark. Unbelievable. They don't True. have her. Every other position they have almost as good. Not almost. <laughs> uh, Caitlin Clark is head and shoulders above uh, most of the people in the in college ba- women's college basketball. But South Carolina is stacked across the yeah, board, and they're huge. They are huge. So it's basically going to be, okay, three-point shots versus inside game and who can, you know, outscore the other. So I, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. That's, All right, let's shift gears. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say that's if Iowa gets past UConn because UConn is no joke either. I know. They're very good. Very good. Page Buckets. Page Buckets. I don't know who that is. Pa- what's Page her? Buckers? Bu- Bukers, Buckers. She's, she's a player for UConn. Mm-hmm. She's very she's good. She's a too. baller. Yeah. All I got to say is the women's basketball team in the Olympics this year is just going to be nasty. It's, yeah, they're, yeah. no game's going to be within 20. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, <laughs> it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah. As, I, I know they were talking about bringing in college players. Did they, have they officially like reached out yet or is that waiting until after the tournament? Because well, I know I before mean, the they'll tournament, be, they'll be pros by then, won't they? Not technically. They won't be the the Olympics will be before the the it, draft. I mean, I think they let AD do that though, right? The year well, they, he was out. They've, they've let a lot of people do it. They let Shaq do it back in the day, and Christian Leitner, and they I did. That. <laughs> yeah, there's like a whole thing. Like they did. A, there's a bunch of uh, college players, and normally they extend it if there's talent that's good enough. Everyone assumes Caitlin Clark is going to play for. Uh, the Olympics and there's going to be a couple of college players. Not no, just the, the WNBA draft is literally next week. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah. April 15th or two weeks to a week and a half from now. So, so they will be pros oh, okay. technically. So I guess it won't matter. It won't matter. Although she can technically come back for one more year. She's she said she's leaving. I know. I think she said she's leaving. I'm just saying she could make that point record untouchable if she really, really wanted to. It's already untouchable. <laughs> yeah, if it sat for Pete Maravich for sixty years, mm-hmm. I think uh, I think it might sit for a little bit longer. But anyway, that wraps up uh, NCAA basketball, men and women's. We're gonna shift gears here a little bit. Back to the NFL, the old bread and butter, what we tend to talk about a lot. I don't know if there's a card for this. Oh, okay, NFL offseason moves. The big one, the elephant in the room. Stevon Diggs traded to the Houston Texans for a bag of Skittles. I mean, it's pretty wild. Literally, the Texans get a top five, ten? I'd say top for ten. sure. Top ten. Top eight, I would say. Wide receiver in the NFL for a second round pick, and you go, okay, 
decent trade value. Oh, wait, actually, it's next year's second round pick. So it's not even this year. And another fifth and sixth is coming to the Texans. So a fifth and sixth round pick. So two picks and a player for a second round pick next year. Absurd. Totally fleeced. Like, why are the Browns not? Why do we not have all three of us? Why do none of our teams have Stefan Diggs right now? You guys it's got Amari a- Cooper for less than a bag of Skittles. So I don't want to hear it. Fair enough. <laughs> but Amari Cooper is never Stefan Diggs. No, no, you're right. He wasn't, but he's turned out to be pretty damn good oh, for you guys. Yeah, so. Trust me. I'm not yeah. reaching to the choir here. I love that we have Amari <laughs> Cooper. He's amazing, but you have someone like Stefan Diggs, who is a, Eagleberg. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A top, top, top player. And the Texans get him for a second. And they get a fifth and sixth round pick. That just doesn't make it make sense other than the It doesn't uh, make sense. Uh, it doesn't make the, the, any sense. Dude, the, the, I will, I'm the, never gonna understand the NFL trade value. What makes it go ahead, Jason. It, what makes it worse is the Bills did it with thirty million dead cap space to add it on to it i don't i don't understand the move at all actually i do understand the move the move is done because of either two two reasons i guess the bills are either going to tank or just see what josh allen can carry them to or two he was that much of a locker room problem that you you had a you had to get him out and uh it's been rumored that he wants to play with his brother so Maybe that's a lot has a lot to do with it. I think it does because the Texans yeah, yeah. they voided yeah. his last two years. Yeah, voided his contract. So after this year, he's a free agent. Um, so like maybe it added all up, and it was just what the best that they could get. Um, maybe the Texans were the only ones to talk about it because they no one else really thought he was available. But that being said, they made the move. We get Gabe Davis. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have seen the meme where it's like, yeah, they got KD, but we got uh, <laughs> John, uh, what's his name, the power forward for the Timberwolves. Um, but it's Anthony Everett's like, yeah, they got yeah. KD, we got our power forward. And I'm like, yeah, well, they got Stephon Days, but we got Gabe Davis. So. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, nah, it's it's uh it's sad to see um the sad to see the Texans going all in because it's it's something that i would like to see the jags do i mean we're kind of in the same situation we got a really good quarterback you got a good running back you got a good team around a nucleus around we just maybe a couple more things and we can compete with the chiefs and uh maybe i mean we can, we're still in a situation where we can compete with the chiefs it's just you put yourself in that type of situation where your number one wide receiver and your number two wide receiver and your number one three wide receiver all could be number ones for different teams you're doing yourself some good justice out there, and uh, it's, it's tough to see the Texans do it because they're so freaking close to home. What really stings me is that the Browns really have set the Texans up, like, like oh, yeah. in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah, the Browns, the Browns are the reason. Lovey Smith and the Browns. Lovey Smith. Are the Lovey Smith. Yeah. Lovey, Lovey Smith, Smith and the Browns are the reason that the Texans are now going to win 14 freaking games this year because we gave them three first round draft picks as well as pulled off, allowed them to get a rookie deal quarterback. They have one bad tank season where Lovey Smith gets a last second touchdown to give them the number two pick so they don't you know, make the mistake of drafting Bryce Young first. And now they have all this draft capital. They get Will Anderson because of our pick in that first round that they're able to trade. Then uh, they go out because of all this free cap space from not having Deshaun Watson on their team. They now can go out and sign all these players. They get, uh, they can, well, actually the bills are still paying for Stefan Diggs. So that one, uh, you know, moot but it, it, you basically the browns have set the texans up to be perennial afc contenders and we're gonna have to play them in the playoffs and get shellacked just like we did this year every freaking year by cj stroud throwing dimes to michigan alum nico collins and stefan diggs i just it fires me up 
salt. Yeah, man. you only have to play him once. <laughs> yeah, but shut it. Fair enough. Fair enough. We only have to play him <laughs> once, but uh. thanks, anyway. Andrew Barry. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, D- Deshaun Watson, you better be a top five quarterback this year, because otherwise, it's our it's been a bust. It's already pretty much a bust, uh, but we've been able to push back everyone's contract. Like you can just keep renegotiating the deal, and we get our first round pick next year. Uh, thank God, finally. But uh, if he doesn't pan out this year, like we're screwed. We're, yeah. We are totally screwed until twenty. 27 2026 2027 somewhere in there we can pull him off with this like 30 million dollar gap hit but like it's just it's what sorry i just saw the craziest go go ahead you're good oh i was just gonna say it'll it'll go down uh as one of the worst trades in history and it's crazy to say that coming off an 11 win season where he didn't have much to do with that 11 win season but it's like we are primed to make a deep, deep run and potentially make it to the Super Bowl if he were to play even half the caliber of quarterback we expect him to be as a now 60 because of the renegotiating $62 million a year quarterback. $62 million. That's what we're paying him this year. $62 million. Okay, this dude better be throwing 40 touchdowns to eight interceptions and 5,000 yards. Otherwise, I'm going to become a Texans fan. <laughs> Not really. Bro. I swear to God. I swear to God. <laughs> I'm joining you. <laughs> All right. So is Jason. Or Jason. So is Jerry if uh, J.J. McCarthy goes to the, the Broncos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no. CJ Stroud bandwagon, baby. <laughs> I'm just making stuff you Texans fans. Let's just make this I'm... a Texans podcast, dog. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> Horns up, baby. <laughs> Been fan my whole life. <laughs> no, I'm just waiting for us to go to London. Once we go to London, it's like, uh, on to the next one. Hopefully. Over to the Brownies. We, we need more people. Like I said, when I was five years old, I'm not yelling at the TV screen my whole life, even though I've been screaming at the TV screen my whole life. <laughs> yeah, oh, is, is your situation any better, Jason? <laughs> They've... I plead the physics. <laughs> They've been to an AFC championship in our lifetime. True. True. And we decided not to resign any of our young players, and yeah, yeah. and then we got Trent Balky misses every draft pick, and then does there great free agency, and then cuts everyone, and then I'm tired of this. I right? I'm sick and tired of this. I'm losing my mind. I'm back to the last year. I didn't watch the draft as much as I normally did. I'm back to that. Like we all end up. <laughs> it's just. It's, it's, it's a sad life, all right? But it's a life we live in. Go, Jack. Yeah, I, I haven't paid attention to the draft in the last couple of years because we don't have, you know, a first-round draft pick. Same, brother. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, to continue, any any other big NFL offseason moves? I don't think there's been any, like, major blockbuster uh, no. or any big signings uh, that I remember. Uh, so we're going to continue a segment we started a couple weeks ago. We didn't get to it last week, I don't believe, but we're now going to be doing uh, continuing to work off-season moves for different teams in all of the divisions. We're now going to double up and do two divisions each week, uh, kind of speed through it a little bit faster. I know we took a long time the last couple of times. We're going to speed through it here, but uh, you know, focusing on different moves that you can make. We were doing pick, trade, and uh, cut. Now we're kind of just doing different moves you can make, whether that's a couple different picks, a couple signings, whatever, uh, for all of the NFL teams. And then uh, the last week will be the week before. Correct me if I'm wrong. The, the week before. Day of, or the day of the draft, uh, actually. The day of the oh, NFL draft. Oh, that's right, yeah. 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 So next, we'll, we'll finish up the day of the draft. And uh, I haven't talked to any of these guys about this, but maybe we could do like a draft live stream. Like where we're going through. I mean, say less. Uh, say less. We, I know, say yeah. less. So we can't say less. 
Uh, we won't be able to stream the draft, obviously, like on screen, but we yeah. can, you know, stream us watching React it. React to yeah. the draft, right? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we'll definitely uh, – Unless we get talk more broadcasting rights from the NFL, I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, get to work. We'll see. Uh, but that would be really fun. Uh, we haven't talked about any of that yet. Maybe we'll start that. What time does the draft start? Eight? Seven? Eight? eight. Seven. Eight, I believe. I thought it was – oh, you're right. It's eight on That's Thursday. Perfect. I think seven on Friday. That's perfect. We'll start. I mean, we're, we're figuring this out right here, guys. So we appreciate you watching. Maybe we do the our regular show from seven to eight, and then eight on is the live like live streaming our reaction to the draft. If you have any, so, if you have any suggestions for stuff for us to do, let us know in the chat, please. Yes. We'll, yes. Uh, thank you. We'll look at way them. to utilize way to utilize the chat, Jerry. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, also, how come when chat during the live version of our show it doesn't come up as a youtube comment i don't know i don't know how that works yeah i wish it would because sometimes like during the live stream i miss stuff and i don't want to like never address that i'd love to go back and read through it and uh, i just wish there was a way to keep record for that and something else we'll have to figure out but anyway yeah. moving on we're going to do the afc north this week and the nfc north this week uh, and again, just like the last couple of weeks, we did one team together and then each of us took, uh, one of the other teams in the division for both of them. So, uh, for both divisions, we took the division winner. We'll start with the AFC North. Uh, we did the Ravens together. So, uh, Jerry, why don't you lead us off with, uh, who are we picking in this draft? All right. So the Ravens got a late first round pick. Um, obviously no OBJ coming back this year. So we're going to take a wide receiver, wide receiver from Texas at Donai Mitchell do as an absolute freak in the, uh, in the college football playoff and their game against Washington. Um, I, I mean, the Ravens need some help at wide receiver. Yes. Zay flowers is going to be a, a superstar in this league he showed it this year he had some faults in the playoffs with kind of rookie mistakes but he will be able to bounce back and he needs another guy to kind of take that pressure off of him so he's not getting double teamed triple teamed in the secondary so give us a donai mitchell wide receiver from texas i love it we're going to do two signings the first signing is going to be of edge rusher outside linebacker former Steeler bud dupree so hey they take Pratchett queen we take Bud Dupree. Now, Bud Dupree just came from the Titans, so it's not like he was just with the Steelers. But uh, a, a, a pretty decent edge rusher. I believe he's over the age of – right around the age of 30. I, I want to say he's 30. 30, 31, somewhere 31. in there. 31. Yeah, he's 31. Okay. So 31, so he's an aging edge rusher, but that doesn't mean that he can't uh, go and make a difference. You saw what Jadavian Clowney was able to do this year. Uh, for the Ravens. So this is somebody that could definitely fill that spot and be a good piece of that uh, pass rushing uh, uh, unit up front for the Ravens. Speaking of peace, we're going to switch over to our second pick, who is Andreas Pete. Um, he is an offensive tackle from the New Orleans Saints. Uh, he's been a solid tackle for them for a while now. Um, he was at the Stanford University, I want to say a couple years after Andrew Luck, maybe. I don't know. But that being said, solid offensive tackle um, that boosts up some of the issue with them releasing uh, Orlando Brown, right? Orlando Brown is who I'm thinking of. Um, Brent but Brown. yeah, Trent mm -hmm. Brown, thank you. What Jay said. Is it Trent Brown or is it Orlando Bruce. Brown? I'm pretty sure it's Orlando, Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown plays for the uh... – They both play for the Bengals. Bengals, yeah. Right. I just can't remember Who... which one was already there. Pretty sure it was. Me... Orlando. Uh, Orlando Brown. Orlando Brown, wasn't it? Orlando Brown uh, played for the Ravens. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. You're, You're right. right. My You're bad. right. My You're bad. right. My um, bad. Put some respect on his name. Jeez. <laughs> Jerry. Put some respect on my face. Jay, okay, well, that wraps up the Ravens. Let's move over to Jerry and the Bengals. Take it away, Jerry. All right. Bengals, obviously superstar quarterback, first overall pick in Joe Burrow. However, he's been hurt a couple times. They need some depth on the offensive line. They need to protect that man. He's taking all your cap space. Protect the man. He's going to be your franchise guy. We're going to take Troy Fouth. 
Fatano. I don't know how do you pronounce that, I guess. Help me yeah, out. But, uh, <laughs> I think he nailed it. Fat I think... Fatano. Offensive lineman from Washington, he's going to provide a little bit of depth and uh, compete with Trent Brown for that uh, for that tackle spot. Um, yeah, the, I mean, you just can't – if you're going to make a run to get back to the Super Bowl, you can't have Joe Burrow getting hurt every single year. It's just not going to work out. you got to protect the man, give him a little bit of depth if somebody on the offensive line does go down. And plus, you know, Troy Fautel now, however you say his name, you will get um, you know a young guy at a good cost. He could pan out, you know. I mean, Trent Brown and Orlando Brown are not going to be around forever. So if he pans out, get them at a low cost. It'll be uh, be good for the future. For our, our trade, we went with a pick trade sign here. So our trade, this is going to parlay later in the uh, later in the show. But we're giving up T. Higgins and whatever the hell the Vikings want to get Justin Jefferson. Bring him home. Get the trio back together. Jamar Chase, Joey Burrow, and Jay Jets. We saw what they did at LSU in that championship game. They absolutely torched Clemson. Imagine what they're going to do in the NFL together. And then in free agency, unfortunately, the uh, the Bengals lost to Wuzier. So we got to bring in some help at secondary. So we're going to sign Xavier Howard. I uh, should be able to get him at a decent price. Maybe, I, I mean, he's still on the market after all this time, so he's he's probably going to take a lower contract to be able to compete in a competitive division and hopefully get back to the playoffs. Uh, but the Bengals are going to need some help in the secondary, so we're going to take Xavier Howard. I like it. That's quite the blockbuster uh, to get Justin Jefferson yeah. to play next to Jamar Chase. I, that's... Yeah. Stephon Diggs for, for a second-round pick, hold my beer. Give me J- <laughs> Jay Jets for T Higgins and a bunch of stuff. Jason will uh will parlay on on what that is later, but we'll get for to now. It. Speaking of Jason, for now we have the Steelers and the Steelers cut Mason Cole their center. Not that great of a player, anyways. Uh, we're not going to talk about that too much. But they draft Jackson Power Johnson, JPJ, the center out of Oregon, and I. In my opinion, uh, JPJ is the best offensive lineman prospect in the NFL draft right now. Um, I think he's a day one starter. We drafted later than a bunch of the guys in the first 15 picks, um, but he'll end up being probably the longest starter out of these guys. Um, For the Steelers, what weapons do they have? They have one receiver in Pickens, two receiver. They picked up... Van Jefferson, the third receiver for the Rams, and they have Quez Watkins, who was the fourth best receiver for the Eagles last year. So we are desperate, and uh, desperate times comes for desperate measures. We got a JPJ, now we go for OBJ, and we sign Odell Beckham Jr. Um, we have two signings for the Steelers. The Steelers need to improve their offensive line a lot. Um, that being said, Mekhi Becton is the pick we went with. Um, very athletic, was one of the uh, had one of the best combines for offensive linemen of all time, but it hasn't performed. Whether that's due to injuries or knowledge of the offensive line position, um, I think with the Steelers you're going to get uh, better coaching and uh, get a get be able to get his best attributes out on the field. Um, they like to run more than they pass. And you also have two quarterbacks that are very good at running around. So you're going to want some guys that can side-to-side move. So we're going to go with Mekhi Becton. I like it in the sense that I hate it because it's the Steelers, but I think all of those pick, all of those decisions would be good and help them uh, move forward this year. And that leads us to the best team in the AFC North. We saved the best for last. Obviously, I'm going to give the – uh, sort of off-season moves for the Cleveland Browns first coming because as as I've already mentioned on this show the Browns do not have a first round draft pick but we do have a second round draft pick and right now it's like what do you look at okay so defensively we were one of the top defenses in the NFL last year but we relied on a lot of people that are a lot of uh, older veterans on the interior and really all across, but mainly the interior of our defensive line. So that is, I think is the area while we did re-sign Mo Hurst, while we did re-sign Shelby Harris, we still need a little bit more uh, youth and ability up front and who better to, to pick than a former Ohio state Buckeye, Michael Hall Jr. 
in the second round, a uh, athletic pick, a guy that can go and and definitely be a rotational player off the bat, and somebody that uh, Schwartz can help mold and develop. You know, this is definitely someone that uh, you know we can move him around across the line on pass. Uh, on passing plays like this is definitely somebody that can fit and then you're working with a lot of other really strong really good defensive veterans up front so michael hall jr for the first pick second uh decision we decided big blockbuster trade i'm gonna i mean this isn't like a, a justin jefferson t higgins trade but if you're a browns fan you understand that our offensive line has been one of the strongest points of our team for the last several years except our left tackle Jedrick Wills we got this guy the 11th pick in the draft out of Alabama he's supposed to be a dog and he is terrible he is terrible he had a like 50 rating on PFF this last year and spent half the season injured his backup who we got off the street was better than he was I don't want him in here anymore so we we trade Somewhat injury prone, but Pro Bowl caliber Jack Conklin and a second round next year draft pick. So we're still getting Michael Hall this year, next year second round draft pick for left tackle for the Las Vegas Raiders, Colton Miller. A, a very, very solid left tackle, somebody that's a top five to 10 player in the NFL. He's 28, he's in the middle of his prime, someone that could fit right into our offensive line. And while we don't have uh, Bill Callahan anymore is the greatest O-line coach in the NFL. We still have a lot of depth, a lot of great players there, so he'd fit right in. And the last signing, we need more weapons. All, you know, Amari Cooper's been great. We did get Jerry Judy. Thanks, Jerry. And we have a couple of uh, younger talent and Elijah Moore and Cedric Tillman. But a nice, crafty lunch pail. First guy in, last guy out. Veteran. Classic route runner. Quicker than fast. <laughs> sneaky athletic hunter renfro signing uh just two years ago he's a pro bowler with over a thousand yards last year he definitely fell off a lot uh with jacoby myers coming in take kind of taking that number two role i think uh, a place like cleveland would be great to put him back in the slot and be a solid contributor so that's the browns now let's move over to the NFC North. We're back together again for the division winner, the Detroit Lions. Jerry, who are we picking in the draft? We're going to pick up cherry, grape, you know, whatever flavor you want. Kool-Aid oh McKinstry. Kool-Aid McKinstry. Cool name, but he's also a dog. Beast in the secondary. We need some help after losing C.J. Gardner-Johnson back, uh, back to the Eagles. The offense was obviously not the problem in Detroit last year. They had a knack for getting torched on defense. So we're going to pick up Cooley McKinstry, give us a little bit of youth, a little bit of depth on the back end. And when you're, uh, when you're competing in a division that's got Justin Jefferson and DJ Moore and Keenan Allen, you're going to need some help in the secondary. So we're picking up Cooley McKinstry, cornerback, Alabama. Uh, for our trade, we are going to move a 2025 fourth round pick and a 2020 this uh, this year sixth round pick next year fourth round pick for linebacker Quincy Williams from the Jets. Quincy Williams is a gr great linebacker. He's 27 years old right now. Uh, I believe he just got a contract extension last year. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I'll have to. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was last year. So pretty he's. Sure. He, it's a good way for the Jets to offload a little bit of their cap as well as get ability to bring in some younger talent with the fourth and sixth round pick. And you add a solid defensive player to a Detroit team that did not struggle much on for offense, but definitely needed some better defensive play, uh, even at uh, uh, especially at that linebacker position. They have their uh, now second year linebacker out of Iowa, Jack Cam Jack Campbell. Is that right? Jack Campbell, uh, who was making really good strides last year. He's going to step up. He's going to be a really good player. I think uh, Quincy Williams added to that that room is definitely going to be helpful. Uh, and the last but not least, Jason, what do we got? We are going to sign safety Eddie Jackson from the Bears. Um, sorry, he played for the Bears last year, got cut. Um, Eddie Jackson has been one of the most um, prolific turnover machines 
on the defensive side of the ball. He uh he has I believe I want to say four pick sixes, um in his last five years. Um so losing CJ CJ Johnson, you add Eddie Jackson. He might not be playing to his prime level, but even if you get a step down Eddie Jackson, it's still better than what they have right now. And we are signing Eddie Jackson. And also, this man said ex Jet Quincy Williams. Don't let him forget, Quincy Williams was a Jacksonville Jaguar at one point. That's true. That's true. That's true. But he's currently a Jet, so. Yeah. Yeah. Because we cut him from our practice squad. What are we doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. You sound good. No, there's always a trace of linear. If you you look through the NFL, there's a Jaguar on every team, all right? (laughs) Yeah, you're just doing the NFL's well. farm team. It's doing fine. well. Yes, doing quite well. Doing always better. Well. Always better when they left. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. or really we, good when they left, but still <laughs> left. So. Yeah, we we could have kept that part quiet, but yeah. Anyways, yeah. all this it's stuff. It's all right. Right now, we we've had to get uh, uh, Jordan Hicks from Minnesota for the the Browns, who is a really good player, but. We could have had the Alabama linebacker that now is with the Patriots, whose name I'm not remembering, but Mac uh, he, my, yeah, Mac Wilson, who was, you know, everyone was like, oh, this guy's going to be the next thing. He was absolutely awful in Cleveland, goes one year in the Patriots system and all of a sudden is amazing. You wonder maybe if Schwartz would have had him to work with, uh, he could have done the same thing in Cleveland. He's there. I get what you're feeling, although – not even close to the same extent. We're going to move on to the other uh, teams of the NFC North. Jerry, the Bears, what do you got? You have, you have a lot of options here. Yeah, we do. So, obviously, the Bears have the first and the ninth pick in the draft. I toyed with trading out of the ninth pick. Um, I, I I didn't like it, though. I think there's a lot of good options at the ninth spot for, for this team. Uh, so, the first pick, obviously, Caleb Williams, USC quarterback, is going to be supposed to be a generational talent if you trade justin fields you know that's that's where they're going it's you know a no-brainer however with the ninth pick we're going with jared verse edge rusher from florida state they need another guy on the other side of montez sweat and this dude is an absolute freak of nature absolute freak of nature ran a four five at the combine um his comparison his nfl comparison has been lamar woodley so i mean just an absolute beast and and florida state's florida state's undefeated record last year yes their offense you know had something to do with it but it was largely in part to their defense except for the the game against georgia we won't talk about the game against georgia but their undefeated record jared verse had a huge part in that so we're going to take jared verse from florida state we are signing offensive lineman Lakin Tomlinson. He's still on the board. Uh, kind of surprising, honestly. He uh, he provides some some good experience. A little, you know, they need a veteran on that offensive line. They also need some depth if they're gonna keep Caleb Williams healthy. They do have uh, really good tackles uh, in Darnell Wright, and their other tackle whose name is escaping me right now. I don't know. I'll think of it later. But we're going with the interior offensive lineman. Um, kind of beefing it up and give give some interior thank you Tim Jenkins uh maybe DeAndre Swift will be able to to run the ball inside you know kind of take the pressure off Caleb Williams a little bit and then obviously the Bears trade for Keenan Allen and one of the biggest trades in the offseason they signed or they traded for DJ Moore last year so we're gonna pick up a third receiver from a team that I just talked about Cincinnati Bengals they're gonna let Tyler Boyd go to the Chicago Bears. He's going to be their third option. Uh, more than likely, he's going to want to go somewhere where he can be probably a number two or even a number one option. But a team like Chicago is poised to make some deep runs in the coming years. Probably not this year, but give them like a year or two. They could be in a spot to make a couple of deep runs. So Tyler Boyd wants to be on a winning team. They're going to sign Tyler Boyd for a decent contract. I think they could get him at a pretty good price. Um, so, yeah, that's what the Chicago Bears are doing in this offseason. Lots of moves. Chicago, easy. if Caleb Williams pans out, definitely a contender in the NFC North and a pretty open 
NFC North, to be completely honest. Uh, the next team in the NFC North, which has a apparently a blockbuster trade we're about to learn about. Uh, oh, Jason oh. Scott. Oh. <laughs> New man on the Minnesota Vikings. Jason, uh, take it away. All right. Let's break down the original trade from the Cincinnati Bengals. Jerry said we are offering just uh, T. Higgins and whatever they want. So we're coming for their head. All right. We give (laughs) Justin Jefferson for T. Higgins a 2025 first-round pick and a fourth-round pick out of 24. Um Stephon Diggs only got a second. There's no way Justin Jefferson doesn't get a first. Um, so we give them. Sorry, we get the first and we get T Higgins, who also I think by himself is a number one receiver. I just think you don't call him a number one because he was beside Jamar Chase. I still believe he's a top 32 wide receiver in this league. Um, then. Not only. Do we trade with Justin Jefferson? We're going for the full rebuild, and we are trading down our first round pick at number 11. They said, you're going for a rebuild, and you're trading down? What? That is because Michael Penix Jr. is the rated sixth best quarterback in the draft. Huh? 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 You're telling me Michael Penix is not better than J.J. McCaffrey? Can't even say his name. The guy up north, the team up north quarterback, no. He might be at minimum. Michael Penix is the fourth best quarterback, but he won't. He's not projected to go in the first round. So we're trading down in the first round. We're still going to make sure we can get him. We trade pick eleven to the Cowboys for pick twenty four. The Cowboys need an offensive tackle. They go get their tackle at pick eleven, and we go get our quarterback at pick twenty four and add a pick fifty six on top of that. The hell? That is a extra fourth round pick and an extra second round pick for this draft next year. We also have an extra first round pick to help with the rebuild. Maybe we trade back into the first round with that next year first round pick and we go get a, another wide receiver to compliment T. Higgins, Jordan Addison, and whoever it might be. I like and that. That is, that is the Vikings on to the Cheeseheads. Cheeseheads who uh, made it. And made it to the playoffs last year based off of Jordan Love, who I guess is the, now the next Aaron Rodgers. It's pretty ridiculous that they keep picking up these amazing quarterbacks. But uh, similar to the uh, the Lions in that the Packers' offense is fantastic. It was fantastic this year, uh, but their defense uh, left a lot, a lot to be desired. They have the 25th overall pick. Um, I, I, I just talked about the defense. That'll be the second pick in the signing. First pick, they do need to shore up their offensive line. David Bakhtiari is uh, completely injury prone, and I don't think he's – has he re-signed anywhere? I, nope. I know that they released nope. him. still a free agent. So he's a free agent. Uh, he is – when he plays, he's a top three offensive tackle, but he's literally been injured every year for the last three years. So you never know what's going to happen with him. But uh, so for that 25th, uh, 25th overall pick – You take, uh, I have the Packers taking Amarius Mims, the tackle out of Georgia. Definitely a a prospect guy. He only played seven games this last year uh, at right tackle, but has the athleticism to play either way and a really high ceiling. Guy is six foot eight, 340 pounds, and ran a 5040. Like DJ Burns got nothing on him. Yeah, no, like this dude is freaking huge athletic has a good punch definitely sits down into his stance does rarely gets beat uh but definitely is more of that uh, uh raw on the rawler side simply due to any but he does have a lot of talent and he played in the sec so it's not like he you know this is a division two or like a one double a guy that's massive like he played in the sec he went up against now NFL players in practice all the time. So this is a guy that definitely can make a difference. Uh, maybe not quite the day one starter, but halfway through the year starter uh, 
or maybe you have to start him because uh, you know you, you know, ain't got nobody else. else. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so twenty fifth pick on Marius Mims, the forty fifth forty first pick. They have the ninth pick of the second round from the Jets. Uh, I have them taking and. I, I didn't want to cut or trade anybody. The Packers have already kind of lost a good number of people and need to really be pulling more people in. So uh, for the 41st pick, we have uh, NS Rakestraw. He's a cornerback out of Missouri. Uh, He is a long, good prospect, very, you know, good on ball skills, good zone coverage, but he's not uh, quite the physical specimen that maybe you would want. So that's why he's kind of more of a second round pick, but definitely a great Great value pick for that 41st pick to pair with Jair Alexander, who they are saying we are not trading uh, or, you know, he's going to be play for the Packers. So uh, they definitely need to continue shoring up that secondary, though. So their signing will be former Broncos safety Justin Simmons, another strong pick, somehow still a free agent. I'm not sure how he's not. How is he not picked up already? I don't know. Because he he resets the market when he signs somewhere, probably. Uh, would be my that guess. Makes, that makes sense. Because that was a surprising cut from the Broncos, wasn't it? Yes. It, it's a hundred percent because they 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 couldn't. Yeah. Yeah. They're paying no. someone else forty mil <laughs> to play for a different team. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's a quarterback. The Bills are paying like thirty mil for a wide receiver to pay for another <laughs> team. So they're paying Baker Mayfield level contract for him to go play in Houston. So anyway, um, Justin Simmons comes. I think he makes a big difference. I think you add a couple of good outside uh, edge pieces, not edge as far as edge rusher, but like secondary, I should say, back seven pieces uh, that uh, I think that definitely helps the Packers, especially in a division where you have to go up against the Lions twice. So uh, those are kind of, uh, that's what I came up with. You know, I'm like not a it. GM, but I could be a GM. You know what I'm saying? I just, play bad. Just, Jason play bad. and I were kind of playing GM earlier before the before the show started, talking about our our blockbuster trade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very, true, true. Very impressive. <laughs> so, uh, any other thoughts on the NFL right now? It's like you said, 22 Sundays away. Very sad. Yeah, very, we got the draft sad. coming up, though. Man, the draft is always exciting. Favorite day of the year, baby. Any basketball news? Cavs suck. That's my basketball news. <laughs> Cavs literally finally get everyone healthy. Now we're falling apart. Like, what are we doing? I, this is my only NBA talk. All I know is we got absolutely dog walked by the Suns last night. Mm-hmm. And Evan Mobley's been playing better offensively. But to, I, I guess at the cost of us playing any defense at all, Booker dropped 41. KD dropped 32. Like, what are we doing? It's bad. It's, half of the issue is the we're kind of set where we are, where the Suns can move around still. Um, I think, right? Because, I mean, the, uh, we can Max. We can still drop. We can, we can still drop three or four. We can, drop, we can drop into the play-in tournament still. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's not we that won't. Yeah, it's... we won't, but we could. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know what I'm talking about, but what I was trying to say is I think the Suns have more motivation to play. Um, yeah. But it's also game three of a five game road trip. So yeah, five games in a row road trip. I get you drop one, but man, it's just like, you know, the, the excuse since the all-star break has been, we just haven't been held, you know, 22 of 23 games before the all-star break, we come back and we literally look like complete dog water because everyone's injured. We don't have, we, we don't have a consistent lineup that entire time. Mitchell's out. Mobley's out. Garland's out even for a little bit. Jared Allen was out for a short stint of that. And now we have everyone back and we're worse than we were when we were in our backups. Like, yeah, I just, I think I think the issue is you you find an identity each time someone gets hurt. <laughs> like for a while when it was Mitchell, it's like we had a great three point shooting, good pick and roll. When Mitchell's in and Garland's in, and it's just the starters, we have pick and roll, 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 and then Mitchell just does his ISO, and then it it just keeps changing. It keeps changing, and I think that that's 
some of the issue. It's it's good to be able to be flexible, but to an extent to when you're not consistently doing the same thing. You can't get in these good habits. What just happened? We crashed. I'm disconnected. Something disconnected. Are we still up on YouTube? We are. We're good. All right. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> back to your regularly scheduled <laughs> programming. <laughs> the, uh, uh, I just wanted to finish. Sorry, I got distracted there. We were talking about um, the Cavs. The last thing I wanted to say on it, and then, of course, you guys, if you have extra thoughts on it, but they were... But just as interesting, uh, the Cavs, I think, are the only team that all three of us are fans of. Is that right? And the Blue Jackets? Yep. Blue yeah. Jackets and Cavs? Uh, Wait. We won't talk about the Blue Jackets. No, this Guardians? Over. Guardians? Yeah, Guardians. Guardians? Sure. Yeah. Baseball is a yeah, sport. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I don't really know any baseball. So. Guardians are really? doing good right now, though. They Very just good. beat uh, somebody 8 0. So, anyway. The um, Mariners? Mariners, yeah. And, they, and I think they just won, like, Five minutes ago, too. So sweet. All I was gonna say, finishing thoughts on Cavs, and then we'll we'll end the show here. But, but I agree with you. We haven't. We we keep changing our offensive identity, which can be, it it, it can lead to struggling to score points. But the problem right. that I'm having is we're giving up 120 points a freaking game the last few weeks, and we were supposed to be that we were going, even just last week, we're the number three defense in the NBA. Like. Like that's the that's the part of that's the end of the floor that's bugging me. It's like if you step up on defense, opportunities will present themselves offensively. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If we lose a hundred and one to ninety two, like I'm not as mad about that because we'll figure out offense when we get by the time we get to the playoffs when we get some time together. But when you're giving up a hundred and twenty two points to these teams, like it's just it's embarrassing, man. Which it's also very unlike the Cavs. Last year they were one of yeah. the top defensive teams. All year this year they've been a very very good defensive team. When you guys when you have yeah. guys like Mobley and Allen inside who can kind of shut down the paint, force teams to shoot it from the perimeter, you, know, you should Coro. be able to. Yeah, yeah. Coro is Coro's a been freak. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they they yeah. should be they should be limiting teams, uh, and they're just they're just not playing up to their potential right now. Unfortunately, yeah, I think the the Bulls and the Timberwolves, or no, the maybe the Heat because of Jimmy. That, that would make more sense. There's a, there's only a couple teams. The Timberwolves are the number one defensive team, but mm -hmm. uh, right which makes after sense that, with Towns like, and Gobert as well. It's kind of yeah. the same situation. Yeah, but uh, outside of them, uh, it was like the Cavs were like you know second, third, fourth all year long. In the last couple of weeks, they've just not been so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what they have to figure out, but something. I will say it but, is it is nice that, um, you know, unfortunate, of course, you never want to see a guy get injured, but nice that Julius Randle is not coming back this season because it is very likely that we're going to be playing the Knicks in the playoffs again. Uh, we got bounced by him last year, so. Or won. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and they, big. and it's not like it was close. Like, they dominated us. Yeah. Dominated it's us. Like, manhandled. So. It was nice, nice for the Cavs that he's not coming back if we do happen to play them again. Well, even with them out, though, I'm still worried. Yeah, Didn't we same. lose them the last time? Like, Yeah. Yeah. So, hopefully, hopefully we figure it out because uh, Jalen Brunson is going to have a field day if we're not playing any defense. Oh, mm -hmm. he sure will. He sure will. Well, any any final thoughts here before we close her out? I don't know what you guys think about what we should do for the draft. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yep, I'm good. Awesome, yep. awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining. We will be back next Thursday. Remember Thursday, not Wednesday. We're moving to Thursday till, of course, we change it again. But next Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, don't forget to follow us on our social media at Unnamed Sports S. Give us a like, subscribe on YouTube, comment us any mean thing you want to say. We will respond. It'll be great. Uh, don't forget to follow us and like us wherever you find your podcast. If you don't listen here on YouTube, um, it will be posted elsewhere. So, again, thanks, everyone, and we will catch you guys next time. Peace out.